Hi, and welcome to Biology 1407. This is Professor Bittner. I'm going to give you a brief uh, lab safety training rules lecture and point out a few things specific to our Biology 1407 course this semester. So first I'm going to go over general lab safety rules and these will be the same no matter what lab, whether on campus or at home, that you might be doing. And I'm going to use this infographic, which comes from Carolina Biologicals. So in the lab, or when you're at home, the most accidents happen because of not preparing and trying to rush through things and not knowing ahead of time how to respond in case there is an emergency. So that's the main focus of lab safety. The first thing is to be dressed properly, um, wearing goggles or safety glasses, gloves, tie your hair back, and usually some kind of lab coat or smock, um, depending on what the lab is. You, if you're on campus, you will have supervision. That would be your instructor or somebody who is well trained. At home, the labs that we will have you do at home, um, you are expected to review the information before you start the lab and follow all the instructions um, for the lab. Know the location of emergency equipment and emergency numbers. Of course, 911 is a very important number for an emergency. In the laboratory, safety equipment would be, for example, the fire extinguisher, the fire blanket, the first aid kit, the fire, um, excuse me, the eye wash, and the safety shower, for example. If you're at home, then knowing, being, ha being able to get to water quickly in case something gets in your eye, um, and just being, um, having, uh, clearing out your space so that you can work without spilling things um, is part of the preparation. You never want to eat or drink in the lab, and you should not eat or drink near your lab experiment at home. So this is a definite rule no matter what lab you go into, all right? The food, the eating area is separate from where the labs, um, where the actual labs are performed. So if you're at home, you wanna keep your food separate. You're not gonna be eating a snack while you're running an experiment. Um, so keeping that separate and just being um, careful in that regard is, is important. Most chemicals have some kind of hazard label on them. There are a couple type of hazard labels uh, that are used. NFPA is one type of label um, and it has a numerical system for rating hazards and there's a new, um, a more, a newer system that uses uh, pictorial images and typically what you would do is if you were in the lab your professor would you know, give you some instruction as to what the, the particular hazards are for that lab in terms of the chemicals and the microorganisms that might be used. When you're at home, again, reading through the information ahead of time, those, and if there are videos that, that accompany, will point out what the hazards are. So being aware. Always be really focused on what you're doing in lab. Like I said, accidents usually happen from not being prepared or fooling around or just not um, not really paying attention to what's going on. If we were in an actual lab room, there are accidents that can happen. I've seen accidents happen, and a lot of them are completely avoidable just by, um, you know, being very attentive, being very focused on the lab. Uh, if we had Bunsen burners, for example, um, I don't allow students to walk away from a lit Bunsen burner. Um, that's just a very strict rule that your professor would have. Um, you can turn it off if you need to walk away and then light it again when you come back. Same would be true at home. You wouldn't want to leave a, a half-completed experiment somewhere where your children or your pets might be able to get to it. Even if you need to leave it to incubate for a while, you want to put it somewhere where it's going to be safe and out of the hands of 
of anyone else who might accidentally spill it or get into it in some way. So just always paying attention to that. What, you know, what could go wrong and how can I prevent that from happening? Uh, if you have to handle hot glassware, in the lab we usually have lab mitts or gloves of some type. If you're at home, I would say it's probably unlikely that you're going to do anything with heat at home, but if you were, of course, you want to um, be careful, just like if you were cooking a meal. In the same way, you would want to use um, hot pads or some kind of mitt um, when handling anything that's, that's heated. Um, and again, I see accidents happen when students just aren't paying attention and then they turn around and they just grab something that, and, and then usually they drop it if it's hot and uh, then you have hot, you know, a burn and you have broken glass. So, so just being really attentive and paying attention is going to eliminate um, injury and spills and messes. Keep a clean workspace. In the lab, we would have you put your coats and bags and such um, on the side or under your bench. Um, when you're at home, you want to, you know, a part of your preparation is to create enough space to do the work. All right. So that takes a little preparation. You don't want your personal items getting into um, the, the lab chemicals or the lab materials. Um, because, you know, partly you don't want to contaminate your experiment, but you also don't want to contaminate your personal items. It goes both ways. Glassware, if you do have glassware, um, in the at-home lab kits, it's almost all plastic. But in, in a real lab situation, you will have actual glass. If, if glass breaks, then I would um, suggest if your instructor is, if you're in the lab and you have the instructor, you would mention that to them, they'll give you guidance on what to do. Um, of course you can get cut with glass, broken glass, um, but typically these things are cleaned up pretty easily. Um, it's one of the reasons why we don't wear bare feet in the lab and you shouldn't wear bare feet um, if you're working with anything glass, I guess, at home, because if you break something then you know you could step on some glass and such, but most of your at-home kit will be plastic, I suspect. Um, clean up. There will be instructions for cleanup. For the most part, um, it's washing any of the tools that you've used, rinsing. The instructor, if you're in the lab, the actual lab room would show you how to um, let them drip dry. We typically let glassware and, and other tools drip dry. Some things get dried with paper towels. Um, wiping up your lab table just to be sure that you didn't spill something on there. At home, same kind of thing, Rinse, rinsing things off, um, disposing of things in the way that it's supposed to be disposed of. Um, sometimes in lab there are chemicals that cannot go down the sink, and so your instructor would let you know that ahead of time. For, for this lab, for Biology 1407, the at-home lab, we will be doing a pig dissection and the disposal for the pig dissection is that the pig and the parts of the pig and the and the piggy juice and the paper towels that might have piggy juice and piggy parts all of that is going to go into some kind of plastic trash bag um, and it can go into the regular um, trash bin so we have chosen materials that can that don't need any very special disposal, but you want to contain all of it in a, in a, in a bag um, as, and then dispose of it. So another one of the safety items that's not listed here, which will be important for the pig dissection, would be to really watch the video uh, ahead of time, read all the information ahead of time, and you will be using um, a cutting object, a sharp object like a scalpel or something similar, and so that's the main reason you really want to wear the safety glasses. I find that students sometimes wave that, that scalpel around a little bit, and I would hate for somebody to get uh, a scalpel in the eye. Uh, because you'll be working alone at home, there's probably less chance of that. You probably won't get so um, worked up talking about the pig with your lab mates. If we were in the lab room, you would have lab mates and we would be very aware of that scalpel. You know, where is the scalpel? Don't leave it down. If you're at home, you don't want to leave it somewhere where a child or an animal might get to it, or even another adult. 
Um, and so we're going to be very aware of the scalpel um, when we're doing the dissection. Just like if we were lighting a Bunsen burner, we would need to always pay attention and be aware of the Bunsen burner. As far as chemicals go, any chemicals that you would use in a lab, one of the key things is always close the lid very well on any chemicals. So that means you constantly have to open and close the bottles, which seems like a hassle, but that's what we do. We open them, we use them, we close them. And so it's part of that habit that you want to, even though you're doing an at-home lab, you can start making some habits that would match what you're going to be expected to do when we get to the on-campus lab at some point. So that is the end of my general lab safety speech. And there is a short quiz that goes with this. You also have a, a safety contract as part of your grade for this lab, for this lab safety and orientation. Um, and so you're going to download that, and there are some instructions on how to get the Adobe Creative Cloud so that you can sign it, quote unquote, in Adobe Acrobat, and then resave the completed form as a PDF file. It has a specific title that you need to use uh, as you save the file. I'm going to show you that form. Here's the form. And I'm just going to go over it briefly, but it's virtually everything we talked about. You do need to always read lab instructions and safety information ahead of time. Pay attention. Don't fool around. No horseplay, pranks, or jokes. Follow the, all the instructions by the instructor. If you were on campus, you're never allowed to work unsupervised in a lab. Of course, at home, you're, you are a little bit on your own. You don't want to eat, drink, or apply cosmetics or mess around with your contact lenses. Um, in, in the lab or while you're doing experiments. All right, keep your work area tidy. Make sure you have that workspace that we talked about. Keep all your personal items out of the way. Eye protection must be used for the, you know, for the pig dissections, for example. Where, uh, any additional safety equipment that's provided, aprons, gloves, as directed either in the written information or if you have a live instructor. instructor. Um, number three is kind of an interesting one. Wear closed-toed shoes. We actually have changed our language on this. We like to say wear closed shoes because there are some shoes that technically have a closed toe, but the rest of the shoe is open. And so what we mean is like, you know, when you, when you work somewhere and you have like a work shoe, it's like completely closed. The entire foot is covered. So we, we really changed that language to wearing closed shoes not just the toe, but the whole shoe is covering your foot. You do want to tie back long hair, avoid looser baggy clothing. Short, we don't allow short, squirt, short skirts or short shorts in the lab, although when you're at home, um, we won't have any control over that. But you do want to cover your body. And that's the, one of the main reasons we wear like a lab coat, is just that extra covering. Remember that your instructor has worked in a lab and has seen accidents happen and also has worked with students and seen accidents happen. So from our perspective, from the teacher's perspective, accidents can happen and probably will. And so we look at it from that point of view. You may not have ever seen an accident happen. And so you might think that they can't or won't. But actually, that's not the point of view that we as the instructor would have. Report, if you're on campus, you would report all accidents, spills, or injuries to your instructor. Um, know the location of and how to use safety equipment in the classroom. Know how to get out of the building. If we were using Bunsen burners and something got lit on fire, we might have to evacuate. Wash hands with soap and water after you're done, especially after dissecting a pig. You probably That probably doesn't need to be said. Um, consider all lab chemicals and specimens to be dangerous or to have some level of danger. Don't touch, smell, taste chemicals. That's, that's a general rule of thumb. Don't, don't drink the, the lab chemicals. Um, read the labels on bottles. Also read any of the other information before you start the lab. We always, like I said, open a chemical bottle, use the chemical, and then close the bottle. You also never put, if you pour chemical out of a bottle, you never pour, like let's say you overshoot it and you have extra, you would never pour it back into the main bottle again. You would dispose of the 
unnecessary chemical somewhere else. So that's a, a key thing. Never pour a chemical back into the bottle. I know you feel like, oh, I'm wasting it, but in fact, the correct procedure is never to pour anything back into the main bottle of a chemical. Um, number three and four probably don't apply to us too much when we're at home, but you would never remove chemicals, specimens, or equipment from the lab, and you would always follow proper procedures when operating a burner or a heat source. In microbiology, we use burners. Uh, I teach genetics. Sometimes we use burners. Um, typically, in other labs, we use like a hot plate. So just be aware of that, those hot items, the open flame and the even the heat, the hot plate, are, um, have a certain amount of, of risk. Don't handle broken glass with bare hands. Use a brush and dustpan to clean up broken glass. Um, it, in the lab, there's a special container for where you would put the broken glass. When you're at home, I suspect you would put it um, in your regular trash. But in, in the lab, there is a special container for broken glass. And then dispose of waste materials as directed. So if you have any allergies or medical conditions, you can fill out this little um, section on the left. Uh, if not, click no. But you're going to fill all this in. And what you can do on this, when you get your Adobe Acrobat, over here you see where it says fill and sign. When you click on that, it lets you type in stuff. So you can type in your initials on each of these. And then when you get to the bottom, you can just type your um, signature. Or if you already have a, a if you want to do a written, handwritten signature, you can if you know how to do that. But um, you can type it. That's going to be sufficient. And then the date. Then you're going to save this using a the specific um, file name that, I, that is indicated in the safety module. If you have any questions, contact your professor. And thank you for listening to Lab Safety.